Here it comes. What are we watching for? Neek, Bills, Dolphins, everything at stake. What are you watching for in that game? The Dolphins have a lot of injured players right now, but there is one that matters above all others, and his name is Tyreek Hill. Yep. If Tyreek Hill is healthy and effective, and of course, to his shoulders, feeling good enough for him to get him the ball, I like to see the Dolphins in that matchup, so that's what I'm looking for first. Kmart, the rivalry, Packers-Bears, means everything to Green Bay. What are you watching for in Lambeau? I'm watching Green Bay, particularly Jordan Love. Listen, can this kid do it again for another week. This, we thought this team could be competitive, but now they could actually make the playoffs. That is huge considering we weren't sure about Jordan Love just when the season started. So this is a good kid. Let's go back to the AFC, Jeffrey. Your Colts win and in when they host the Texans Saturday night. What are you watching for? Got to attack that secondary for the Texans. If you look at it, you got to you, you, they pass the ball to score, but they got to run it to win. Minshew's going to be vital in this matchup. You know D'Amico Ryan's going to put a good plan together, but the Colts got to expose that back into the defense. And then Swagoo, your beloved Cowboys can clinch the NFC East with a win over the Commanders. What are you watching for? I'm watching to see if they can get this run game going, G. I think it's an element they need to continue to elevate this offense, all along with the way Dak Prescott is playing. We saw him and C.D. Lamb hook up to the tune of 200-plus yards receiving. But this is the element of their game where I think you can get to the point where you start thinking they're a dominant offense if they can start running the football. I like to see that against the Washington Commanders. Have a whole game plan for offense mm -hmm. as opposed to having to push the ball down the field every time you drop back. So, look, the Cowboys control their destiny in the division because of a somewhat shocking Eagles loss mm -hmm. against the Cardinals. So now with his team on the brink of the title, Jerry Jones is appreciative of the gift Philly <laughs> gave them. Listen to this. Yeah. Certainly we thought that uh, this is where we wanted to be from the day we walked into training camp, uh, be in a position to uh, play hard and win a game and, and have it uh, uh, give us this kind of shot at home. So, uh, Excited to no end. I just couldn't believe it when uh, uh, Philadelphia uh, ended up losing that ball game this weekend and gave us this uh, uh, opportunity. A lot of people couldn't believe it, but it does put them in a position after sort of a, an up and down roller coaster of a season. There have been so many moments where they le seemed like they were done. There were yeah. moments when they seemed like they were the best team. I want to start with this question and then we'll dive into it more deeply. But Marcus, I'll start with you as my former cowboy. They've been given a gift. Are they good enough to cash it in? I don't mean beat Washington on Sunday. If they don't do that, then they don't deserve anything else. Are they good enough to take this gift they've been given and make a run at least to the NFC Championship game? Are they good enough to do it? Yeah, they are good enough to do it. It's about the San Francisco 49ers for the Dallas Cowboys. I think everybody else in this, every team that we've deemed to be top-tier teams between Detroit and obviously, we look at Philly. Well, maybe not anymore. But mm -hmm. Dallas should be considered the second best team in the NFC. The Rams are making a charge, though, and are very scary with what they're doing. But if you look at this team, and if they can play and stay within the way that they like to play football, they are a hard out for anybody. This is the first year, G. You know I've had a, many conversations. This is the first year I feel like Dallas, they beat the Commanders. This is set up for them to have an opportunity to play in the NFC Championship game. And that's all you can ask for, is one shot to get to the big show. But go and win this game, and obviously the Philly collapse, putting them in this situation, which it takes some luck to win championships, it sets up perfectly for Dallas. Now it's about how they play as mm -hmm. opposed to will they have to go on the road? What scenario are they going to have to have? Are they going to have to do this in front of somebody else? I think this is a is a is a fair shot as any for them to play for an NFC championship. That's exactly right. Something, of course, they haven't done in this millennium. And that brings me over to Mr. Saturday because we're having our meeting this morning. Yeah, uh, we're all enjoying your your quarter zip there. <laughs> And when I asked you that question, are they good enough? Why did you say the answer is yes? Because Dak Prescott's the best quarterback in the NFC. And anytime you got the best quarterback, you got the chance. And so you look at what he just did. He's got 27 touchdowns, four interceptions in the last 11 games. 11 games. So when you think about what he's put, putting out there, when your quarterback is playing that effective, you have a chance in any game. And now you put them at home if they take care of business against the commanders this week, and they're averaging 40 points or close to it a game. That is tough to overcome. The bottom line in the playoffs is you got to score points. And Dallas can score points with the best 
rest of them, it's going to be a heck of a shot. Now, stand by, because I know I was on vacation for a week, so, so maybe I missed a bunch of meetings. But when I left, Brock Purdy was the MVP. <laughs> and What did Brock Purdy have me? Oh, I understand okay, okay, that. I, I mean, these things sure. change quickly, but yeah. I, it's very just quickly, worth pointing very out. Very quickly. And I also would like to introduce all of us here to the president of the Jalen Hurts fan club. She's been writing that. <laughs> I mean, for two years now, that's all I've heard. Yes. Kimberly Martin, is yes. Dak Prescott the best quarterback in the, in the NFC? This season? Dak and Purdy are playing better than Jalen Hurts. I think that if you are being honest with yourself and watching film, that's an obvious statement. Jalen, this is a down year for Jalen Hurts. This is a down year for the Eagles as a whole. So when you look at when I look at the Cowboys, to me the only thing when you think about what concerns you about the Cowboys, them. That's it. That I think the Cowboys literally can beat any team with that quarterback, with C.D. Lamb playing as well as he has been this season. But again, we never see the Cowboys come through in big spots, and this is the year to they, take advantage of it. You're right. They're as good as any team. <laughs> they're as but, bad. But? Where's the but? Okay. I mean, they're as bad as any team, too. Like, we just yeah. saw them. I think they're uh, significantly better than uh, the Lions, and they were in a dogfight against the Lions. Yeah. And the team that hadn't had much of a pass rush all season, Aiden Hutchinson was in the backfield as much yeah. as Dak Prescott, it felt yeah. like. And that's the scary part for this team. And then the late-game situations, late-game decision-making. Like, we excuse it if it happened once or twice, but it feels like every season Mike yep. McCarthy at the end of the game gets a little tricky. And their defense was being passive towards the end of that game while their offense was being aggressive. It didn't quite make a whole bunch of sense to me. So I do think that they should be, which is a tough place to be. And they should be, given their pass. That is the problem. It's always a should with the Cowboys. In, in the the NFC will. Championship you can't game. answer the and will part. I, I want to come back, though, to the central <laughs> question here, though. I'm, I'm just jotting down the names of the quarterbacks who are going to be in the playoffs in the NFC. Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy, Jalen Hurts, Baker Mayfield, we think, Jordan Love, we think, Matthew Stafford, Stafford. is playing sort of without anyone paying any attention as well as good. anybody. Man, not last week. But uh, I maybe mean, not I, last they're week. They're toting a the rock. They're running they're it. Running it right. Look, this is a league where everyone has right. been up and down every sure. single week. So I just want, Marcus, one final time. Is Dak Prescott, when, when we, as we head into the playoffs next week, do we yeah. say the Cowboys have the best quarterback in the NFC? Yeah, going into the playoffs, absolutely. Uh, you talk about, like, the hard one is obviously Brock Purdy and what he's done, but when you look at what Dak has been able to do um, in the midst of, remember this too, Dak has played behind an offensive line that hadn't been yes. healthy uh, a lot this season, having his right group together. And then when, they, we, obviously, we saw the issues in that game against um, Detroit with Aiden Hutchinson and the pressure that he was able to put on, and Dak still played, Phenomenal. Steel was able yes. to push the ball down the field. There were some throws. That, that that throw down the seam to Jake Ferguson was one mm. of the best throws I've seen all season all right. long with, from any quarterback. When you start talking about mm -hmm. his playmaking ability, I think what has happened with Dak is Dak has kind of thrown caution to the wind when it comes to how he need, understands he needs to play in order for this team to win. And sometimes that take that that means taking chances, and those chances just have been working out. Jeff knows this. I, I won a national championship in college. It takes a little luck. It yeah. takes sometimes you just being on and being unconscious about what you're doing. And right now, he's unconscious about what he's doing. It takes a little luck for a guy not to wrap you up for a safety and you duck right. out of it and throw an 80-yard touch, a 70-yard touchdown. Those great. type of things have to happen if you're going to win a championship. And I think right now, he's just capitalizing on a lot of these things that other quarterbacks aren't. Okay, first of the year, by the way, on January 3rd, our producer is Julian Goldstick. Yes. I'm not getting to the next one. I'm staying on this. I'm staying on this because I just wrote that. I forgot about the name Jared Goff. So we used to do a bit on the old show, on, on Mike and Mike, we used to do confidence picks. Which quarterback do you have the most confidence in going into a playoff situation? And so I'm going to ask it again. In the NFC right now, you would rank Dak one ahead of Stafford, ahead of Goff, ahead of Hurts, ahead of Purdy, and anyone else who gets there. We, we would right now, if we're doing our confidence picks, you, right, we put a one next to Dak Prescott. Yeah, I, I think so. I think we've never said that before. The, like, that, this would be the first right. time that we've gone into the po the Cowboys have yeah. twenty whatever it is years, thirty yeah. years. We've never gone into the playoffs saying the Cowboys have the best. The only way that you could come up with some other name is if you believe that there is something about being in the playoffs that is going to turn Dak into like a scared, tighten up type of player because he has been playing better than all of them, significantly better than all of them, more consistently in tougher situations than some of them. 
all season long. So it's hard to make the argument other than maybe you just believe he gets nervous in the playoffs, which I don't believe that to be the case. I've seen him have major playoff performances. We saw him go unconscious against the Bucks last year. And so, like, I, it's hard for me to imagine a legitimate argument that someone else is better than him right now. Yeah, the, the, the difference is San Francisco's a better team right. than the Cowboys. So you would put Purdy in there because of all, yes. because of their team. The protection Purdy's going to get is better than what Dak. The thing, the reason I say Dak is playing the best is because he's overcoming. And, and Marcus made this point: their offensive line issues. He was attacked by Hutchinson, all those kinds of oh. But you got to continue to make plays, and he continues to make them. Dak won. That would, confidence pick. Dak if one. If we're talking Purdy two, quarterbacks. quarterbacks. That's right. Yes. That's it. That's all we're talking about. Yeah. Is, is who we have the most confidence because we would, for those of you who weren't, weren't the old show, we, we would break it down into different things. Which coach do you have the most confidence? Which offensive line? Which we would do that. So if it's just quarterbacks, mm -hmm. Dak one, mm -hmm. Hurts two, Purdy two, Stafford two. It's mm. a fun question. <laughs> Pur Purdy two. Purdy not two. Purdy two. Stafford. J ah, gosh. That, that's the point. <laughs> that that's what made it interesting. I'm thinking Jalen. Ah. We had to kill four hours a day.